What's going on internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review. Today we're going to be having a look at Linux Mint 14. Alright, so Linux Mint, it's a distribution that's very popular, it's got a dedicated user base behind it, it's been polishing its own products of both Mate or the Mate desktop environment, sort of a, a fork of GNOME 2, the previous technology, and also Cinnamon, the, techno the, the desktop environment based around GNOME 3 that has really uh, had undergone a lot of development and we've seen a lot of improvements in this release of Linux Mint. So without further ado, let's have a look at some of these features and how they stack up against the recent releases of both the elementary OS beta 1 that recently dropped and also Ubuntu 12.10. Okay, so what has changed since Linux Mint 13, the long-term support release? Well, quite a bit. Cinnamon, the desktop environment that you're looking at right now, is reached version 1.6 and with that a whole truckload of bug fixes and feature enhancements and improvements. So let's have a quick look at those first up because that is what you're really going to notice when you log into the Cinnamon edition of Linux Mint first up. And uh, you can see here just on the panel here we've got a lot going on. We've got a window selector here so any amount of windows that you might have open. You'll have a nice list here that you can spread out across all of the different uh, workspaces and also you do indeed have workspaces here that you can spread the windows out across. Not only that, you can dynamically add and remove workspaces based on how many you need and they will stick there after you log in and log out. So they are they are dynamic to a extent but they are persistent in that once you have selected a certain amount of workspaces they will stay there. You've also got naming workspaces which is pretty awesome taking a hint from KDE there. And you've also got a nice notification center down here on the panel. So any notifications that stack up and say changes in your tracks of music, any uh, notifications you might get on your social networking that you've tied in, or file transfers, etc., etc., will all show up here that you can scroll through and get rid of as necessary, aka the notification center on OS X. Continuing on that little panel there, we do have the volume control and music player controls tied into the music players. We have your Ethernet and wireless uh, settings there, and of course you've got your Bluetooth and your disk mounting utility there as well. Again, all of these are by default, and the cool thing about Linux Mint and the Cinnamon desktop environment is you can bolt more stuff on if you want to. Now also it's good to note here that we do have some settings here available in the menu itself including themes, applets, panel, menus and all settings and all settings brings up the Cinnamon desktop environment settings where you can tinker nearly every part of this window manager. A great feature for any uh, desktop user who likes to tinker their system right down to the nth degree uh, including effects, how your panel looks, what sort of applets you have on your panel. You can see here you've got little check marks next to the ones that you have enabled and you can throw extra ones on there as well as get new ones which will take you to the Cinnamon website where you can download more applets, more extensions for your Cinnamon desktop which is pretty sweet. This is what I like about the Cinnamon desktop environment and what Linux Mint has been doing over the last few releases is they've really been building back all of the customization levels and all of the rich feature sets of uh, older desktop environments that are now being replaced by more streamlined, more, more elegant, albeit more locked down user interfaces. Again, we get a nice selection of backgrounds here as well, photographs looking very nice indeed. And you can tinker pretty much every other part of your system through the Cinnamon settings here as well, which is all pretty nice. Moving right along. The cinnamon menu here has not undergone too much change, but it doesn't really need to either because it is pretty functional. You can see here, add to panel, add to desktop, or add to favorites for any application in the menu list. And you've got some lovely filtered search here for any applications that you might want to use. Moving on to the software manager. The software manager has undergone quite a few bug fixes, so it is now a little bit quicker and also less cr prone to crashing than what it was previously. And you can see here that you've still got the same interface, the same rating system, the same categorizations as you've seen in previous releases. This software center, it works. It's probably not as flash as what you'll find on Ubuntu and a lot of Ubuntu derivatives. But having said that, for, a, for an option that's developed in-house, this, dis this distribution, and its user base is geared towards those who, yes, are fairly familiar with Linux and thankfully they're really looking after their user base in bringing back a lot of the features that people have been missing from these desktop environments. So installing software shouldn't be too much of a hassle at all, with featured software here helping you out making those easy decisions of what applications you should be installing as soon as you install this system. 
Another important tweak that the Linux Mint team have made is that they're now installing, uh, by default, they're using their own file manager, which was developed from the GNOME file manager or Nautilus, and it was forked and turned into Nemo, which is the current file manager for Linux Mint. Now, the reason being is because GNOME's Nautilus was going to remove a lot of features uh, in its latest 3.6 update. So it was decided that it would be much more beneficial for the user base to retain all of the original functionality of the file manager and keep the user base happy, which I think is a great call on, the, on behalf of the Mint team as it is a very functional file manager. And with the extensions of Glubus Preview or something like that, this, this file manager really is a pleasure to use. Of course, on the system side of things, you have pretty much all of the improvements that come with uh, Ubuntu 12.10 on, under the hood. And I've got to say that the Cinnamon desktop environment is very, very snappy. Although it's hard to see here because I am screen recording, the system is very responsive and when it's not doing anything, it uses very little resources. Also, boot time has been vastly improved as well as the boot logo is now showing as well. And it's also worth mentioning that the login screen for Linux Mint is of course its own Mint desktop manager. And you can use all kinds of different themes here at your login screen and customize it how you like. So it's very feature rich and very customizable just like the rest of the Mint desktop now. I definitely recommend Linux Mint for the power user who is getting sick and tired of Ubuntu's Unity interface or its more commercial politics. Of course, Linux Mint has a slightly commercial side to it as well in that by default, the search engine for Firefox is a kind of affiliated Yahoo search that uh, earns Linux Mint a bit of revenue, but they're very open and honest about it. And again, you can disable it if you, if you so wish. Overall, the feature set of Linux Mint 14 has increased quite a bit, uh, especially in the Cinnamon desktop and also the stability of the Mate or Mate desktop has improved as well. It really points to Linux Mint as being a great alternative for those who would like to skip uh, Ubuntu's rather dodgy 12.10 release, as it offers a great deal more features than Ubuntu's Unity interface, and it definitely doesn't sacrifice any speed or stability. Once again, guys, thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think down below of the recent release of Mint 14 and what you'll be using as your primary desktop. Uh, I, for one, am sticking with elementary beta at this stage. Of course, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. And I'll be back with some more Android videos in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.